father. Daddy. The God of our ancestors. The God of us today and forevermore. Father, we know that it wasn't the alarm clock that woke us up today, but it was you. Not only that you woke us up, Father, but you woke us up in our right mind. Able to put on our own clothes. Use of our hands and our limbs, Father God. We want to just, just thank you for that, Father. That our boat, bed wasn't our cooling board and our sheets, our winding sheets. Father, you let us see another day. We're not going to take it for granted, Father. We're going to take it and we're going to surrender ourselves to you, Father God, so you can just use us, Father God. So now, Father, we ask you to just usher up your Holy Spirit upon us, Father God. We want to just be your tool, Father God. We know that you are the all-knowing, Father God. So we ask you to just pour your knowledge upon us, Father. So we can be more Christ-like, Father God. Remove the sin from us, Father God. Father God, we come asking, Father God, forgiveness for all our sins that we've done this week. Father, also, Father God, we just come, come, thanking you for your grace and your mercy, Father God, knowing that it was that that, that is sustaining us, Father, because we're not good, Father God. You're good in us. You're good for us. You're good to us, and we say thank you for that. Now, Father, we ask that if it's your will, Father God, that you just bless the sick, Father God, with your healing power, Father. Stop by the hospitals, Father God, nursing homes and our homes, and encourage them, Father God. Let them know that you're with them. You're still in the healing business, and that one day they will be healed. Father, we ask that you just go out in the highways and byways and find your lost sheep, Father God. You don't instill the word in them, Father God. They know the word, Father, but something came up and just turn them Father God we ask you to just bring them back even if you just bring back one Father God the devil will tremble so we ask that Father God that you just do that for us please we ask that you bless the pastor Father God when he brings forth the word Father God make the scriptures just come alive Father God and just dwell in us Father God may we receive it the way he received it Father God and make us better people. Not just receive it, Father. Let's just do doers of the word. So someone can see our little light shining and say, I yield, I yield, what must I do to be saved? Yeah. Father, we ask you to just bless everyone in this sanctuary on this day. All we want, Father God, all we're asking for, Father God, is your Holy Spirit, Father God. That's all we want. So we can just be more like you, Father God, and make the world a better place, Father God. Increase our faith. Increase our love for everyone, Father God. Increase our finances. But most so, Father God, increase our love for you. Now, Father God, we ask a blessing upon the, the music on this day, Father God. May it cultivate our hearts, Father God, and get us ready for the word, Father God. May there be one voice and one sound. Father, now, Father God, bless our homes. Bring peace in our lives, Father God. We love you. We love our, your, our big brother, your darling son, Jesus the Christ. This is our prayer, our petition, our cry. We do it in your darling son, Jesus' name. Amen.
selection by the deliverance of praise, after which we have a welcome and recognition of visitors by Tamara Hannibal. Central, 
Central Baptist Church family and those viewing via the internet. We would like to welcome you to a wonderful and awesome worship service. All visitors are asked to please stand and remain standing. Well, good morning, Central. On behalf of our pastor and our entire church family, we have a mandate from the master to lift up the name that is above every name. We pray that our services be a blessing to you. May God's richest blessings be upon you. Please take note of the following upcoming events. Vacation Bible School will begin this week from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. The theme is the Jesus Connection, What a Friend. All ages are invited and refreshments will be served. Deaconess Julie Livingston is the director. Pastor Ezel will preach at the Cornerstone Baptist Church, 100 Wayne Street, on Thursday, June the 11th at 7 p.m. Reverend Allison Baker is a pastor. The male chorus and United Voices will accompany the pastor. Our church annual picnic will be held on Saturday, June 13th at Saludo Shoals Park in the Cattail Shelter from noon until 5 p.m. Please join us for food, fellowship, and fun. Report cards for the fourth marking period are due Sunday, June 14th. Please face copies in the academic recognition mailbox located in room 104. Central Baptist Church Music Department will host a two-day music workshop on Friday, June 19th at 6 p.m. and on Saturday, June 20th at 9 a.m. The Education Ministry's Academic Banquet will be held on Friday, June 26th at 6.30 p.m. The fun day will be held on Saturday, June 27th. Graduate Sunday will be held on June 28th during the 11 a.m. worship service. Please view our website for additional announcements by logging on to www.centralbaptistcolumbia.org. Today's scripture is 1 Corinthians 15th chapter, verses 9 through 11. Thank you for your attention. Good morning, Central. Good morning. We reach in the blessed name of God, our Father, Jesus, our Redeemer, the Holy Spirit, our Comforter, and our God. Put your hands together and just give God a hand and clap of praise in the building. Uh, we can do better than that. Put your hands together and give God a hand and clap of praise in the building. Because the Lord is truly worthy to be praised. Amen. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, uh, I don't know about you, but I just came to praise him. Uh, uh, just give God a hand and clap of praise in the building today. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Seems like we're moving just a little bit slow on Sunday morning, but the Lord has been good to us. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord this morning because the Lord is worthy to be praised. Come on, Reverend Byron Dixon, give me just a little bit of that. I don't know what you came to do. Somebody need to praise him this morning. We, we just need to lift him up early this morning. Come on, stand where you are. And let's just have a praise part early this morning before we bombard. Give God praise. Come on, Reverend. I don't know what you come to do. Put those hands together. I don't know what you come to do. What you come to do? I don't know what you come to do. I come to clap my hands. 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 I come to lift him up. I come to lift him up. Go ahead and lift. I come to lift him up. I come to lift him up. Oh, I come to lift him up. 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 Oh, I come to lift him up. 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 To lift him up. I don't know what you come to do. 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 I come 
to lift them up. Remain standing where you are. It's a good time to receive the offering. Remain standing right where you are. God, our Father, we thank you for what we're about to receive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Outside our turn to the wall, inside our turn to face each other. And let's give in the spirit of sharing and giving back to the Lord what he has blessed us with. six o'clock eight o'clock then we're going to close it out on that saturday with a picnic at saluda shows park and 
We're looking forward to the fellowship. I look forward to when we're away from the church many times, meeting you, meeting your family. Because if you can only have church when you're at church, that's a sad indictment on the God that we serve. Amen? The church is in you, so wherever you go, you ought to take the church with you. So we're looking forward. Normally, the church supplies a lot of the meats and things, and others provide their own personal items they bring from their family. Bring and share. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Don't just bring and get in your little private corner over there and say, this is mine. On Saturdays, what's yours is ours. Amen, somebody. Let's just come out and share and fellowship. In old days, they used to have the big meeting days and didn't have fellowship halls and parks. They had the trunk of the car. Amen, somebody. And you go from trunk to trunk. Amen. And you weren't worried about whether your name was on your, your part, your Tupperware, all that stuff. Amen, somebody. Amen. You know, you know, we're real particular now. The first thing we say is, I don't eat from everybody. Well, that may be true, but we used to. Amen. 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 I told you one day I was walking, at, going at the church, and I had a sandwich, and I had my last little corner. And the last little corner is better than the whole sandwich sometime. Amen. I messed around and dropped it out there while I was going out and I looked around. The last corner is the best part of it. When you're down to your last, I dropped it and I looked around. I looked to my left, I looked to my right. Ah, oh, there was nobody in sight. So I picked it up, did a <laughs> Now I know by myself, nobody else at Central Baptist would do anything like that. I'm, I'm just by myself. Amen, somebody. Amen. Because mama told me a long time ago, all that won't kill you. just going how I was raised. Amen. Amen. I, I mean, that sandwich costs almost four dollars. <laughs> just because I dropped it don't mean it was still wasn't good. Let me move on. Well, amen, somebody. Come on, join us for a day of fun fellowship. We're looking for great times as we fellowship together. And then we're having a center of music workshop on June the 19th and Saturday, June the 20th. Um, all our musicians will be participating uh, on that Saturday during a class on praise and worship. It'll be Reverend Byron Dixon. Amen, somebody. And we know it's a young folks say so it's going to be off the chain. Amen. And then uh, Brother Marcus Works will do a class on, on hymns. And then Brother Anthony Allen will do a class on quiet decorum. Uh, and, and, and worship and music. So we're looking forward to a great time. Even if you're not a part of a choir, you may want to come out to the workshop. We're expecting all our choirs to fully participate. Maybe you participated on Women's Day and you're not able to sing every Sunday uh, and you still want to come to the workshop. It is open to you. You're welcome to come. Friday night from 6 to 8 and we're starting Saturday morning at 9. Our breakfast will be from 9 to 10. The praise and worship workshop will be from 10 to 11. The hymn workshop will be from 11 to 12. Lunch will be from 12 to 1. Um, Anthony's sister Nikki is doing a workshop from 1 to 2. Anthony's goal is not from 2 to 3. And then by 3, 3.30, we'll have to be leaving together. Amen. You know, I might even show up to the music workshop. I'm just trying to decide right now. Because I got some hidden treasure and talent on the inside that the workshop may just help bring it out amen somebody amen amen and see for the last 18 years I've been holding back on y'all
Because if I gave y'all all the package at once, y'all wouldn't be able to handle it. So I've been giving you slight pause over the 18 years. But I'm about ready to come to full fruition right about now. Amen, somebody. Amen. I'm looking forward to the workshop. God is a good God. He can do anything and everything but fail. Amen. Then our education ministry academic banquet. On that Friday night, we're going to recognize all of our young people. If they achieved in school up to three achievements, we're going to read them out. We don't have time to do that on Sundays during the time, but we want to make them feel special that night. Please, ma'am, please, sir, don't leave your child off. You never know how another child feels when they're sitting there. They hear in other children names being called, and their name is not being called recognition and encouraging our children is so important to their overall achievement. Please, ma'am, have them here and let us make your children feel, feel special for the school year. I've learned that they make it from one grade to another grade. That's something to celebrate. Amen, somebody. They're tempted with so many things. They need the encouragement of our church family. So come out and join us in that Saturday. We're on Bring them out and just let them loose on volleyball and, and, and basketball and cookouts and everything. We want them to have a wonderful, fun weekend. There's a wonderful spirit in there as you listen to all the graduates and what's going on with them. Amen. I say to young people graduating from college, the option to do nothing does not exist. Can I say that again? The option to do nothing does not exist. You know, men are going off to college. Some young people say, I'm not going off to college, Ray. I'm going into service. Wonderful. Do something. Somebody saying, well, I'm going to get a job. Wonderful. Do something. You can't lay around the house after you graduate and do nothing. That's not an option. It doesn't exist. Amen. And parents, we have to encourage them to find their focus on what it is they want to do. And let's help them as parents to achieve it as much as they possibly can. Well, as we progress through our program, let me acknowledge and thank Reverend Winslow Harrison for presiding for us on this morning. Amen. We thank God for the presence of Reverend Karen Phillips, Reverend Kenneth Wilson, and Reverend Clarence Atterbury. We thank God for each and every one of you. Now as we prepare for our scripture reading by Deaconess Julie Livingston, after the scripture reading, we will have a selection by our deliverance of praise, Carl Lewis. Let us stand at this time. Good morning. Our scripture this morning is coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 9 through 11. For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. You know, this is one of the times that I pray to God and ask God to help me. Uh, he bought me out of many things, and I'm sure he's going to bring me out of this. You all may not know what I'm talking about, but the choir does. So I just ask the Lord to give me the strength to sing this song. Walking in the light, 
Thank you, Kwai, and thank you, Sister Carter, for that selection. Amen. Amen. As Emma was singing about walking in the light, I can help her to look back over her life testimony. Does anybody that's been walking in the light knowing that Jesus is the light is Sister Emma Carter? Amen, somebody. Let me also take this time to welcome Sister Tamara Hannibal, who read our uh, upcoming events, our announcement and recognition to our team of announcers. This was our first Sunday. We welcome you to our team. Glad to have you a part of our team. Amen. Because uh, she teaches our neighboring school, teaches over at E.E. E. Taylor Elementary School. Amen. So we praise God for her. Our scripture read in our hearing us, Deacon S. Jubilee Libis, and I want to focus on verse number 10. Verse number 10 said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God was with me. I just want to talk a little while on this first Sunday in June about God's amazing grace. I'm talking about God's amazing grace. Ah, uh, when you think of God's grace, all you can say is amazing. I don't know how you feel about the grace of God, but all I can declare that God's grace is amazing. Uh, amazing grace. When we talk about grace, we talk about God's unmerited favor and his undeserved benefits. See, grace is the good that we have that we did not ask for. Grace is the ambassador and the attendant of life. Grace meets us on our arrival and grace follows us until the journey is over. I wish I had a prayer in church this morning. See, grace is our ticket out of hell and our passport to paradise. We're talking about grace this morning. Grace, G-R-A-C-E, God's redemption at Christ's expense. That's what grace is. In other words, God looked down at this sinful world and decided that he needed someone to save this world. And he sent a sinless savior in the form of his son, Jesus the Christ. Uh, it's God's redemption. He redeemed this world at Christ's expense. Uh, that's all grace is, my brothers and sisters. He looked around and he, he, he couldn't send Abraham, even though Abraham was a father of the faith, because he could not be sure that when Abraham had an encounter, whether he would tell the truth or not, because he lied and said that his wife was his sister. Well, he couldn't send Moses because he didn't know whether or not Moses would lose his temper and get in a fight and kill somebody. Uh, he couldn't send no 
Noah because Noah may not make it and he'll stop at the red dot, st red dot store and get sloppy drunk all over the place. Uh, I wish I had a witness in here. He couldn't send Peter because Peter would have denied him. He couldn't send Judas because Judas would have betrayed him. He couldn't send Thomas because Thomas would have doubted him. But I thank God for Jesus. I thank God that, that grace is God's redemption at Christ's expense. Uh, he couldn't send David who was a man after God's own heart because he wasn't sure whether or not David would make it to battle because there may be another fine Bathsheba that had caught his eyesight. I, I wish I had some help in here this morning. He couldn't send Solomon because Solomon had too many wives but I, but I thank God for Jesus. He couldn't send Jeremiah because Jeremiah was a crybaby. He might weep all over the place but I thank God for his darling son Jesus. Well, I thank God for his grace this morning. Somebody ought to shout grace in the house this morning. Somebody ought to shout grace. Uh, it's something about God's amazing grace. Now I have a witness in here. Can anybody thank God early this morning for God's grace in the building? It's good to know that you're covered by God's grace. Anybody know that his grace will cover you? His grace is all upon you. Somebody ought to thank God this morning for God's amazing grace. See, grace is not getting what we deserve, but getting what we don't deserve. I stand before you today as a benevolent benefactor of God's generous grace. Let me see, can I make a plain for you about grace? Let her journey outside playing. Mama told him and grandmama told Johnny and daddy told him, Johnny don't play with the ball too close to the car. Johnny's out there playing, throwing the ball up, hitting the ball, hit the ball and, and broke the glass window out of the car. Johnny know what he had been told. He know he should not have done it. So then Johnny knew that there was a beating right around the corner for him. So Johnny went in the house. And I, I don't know about you in Georgia, we had to get in position to get ready for the beating that we were going to get. I, I wish I had a little help in here. So Johnny put his hand on the wall. And then Johnny looked down with tears rolling down at his eyes. So his mama said, what's the matter, Johnny? Johnny said, mama, I broke the window out of the car with the ball and I, I know I'm going to get a beating for doing that. Mama said, Johnny, didn't we tell you not to play near the car with the ball and the bat in your hand? He said, I know you told me not to do it, but I did it anyway, Mama. So I'm ready for the beating I'm going to get. Mama said, Johnny, I saw you when you did it. And I'm glad that you admitted that you did it. It's something about admitting when you're wrong. And see, the mama said, Johnny, go over there. And Johnny said, what you want me to do, Mama? She said, take the top off that pan and get your slice of the cake that I just finished baking. Johnny deserved a beating, but Johnny got a slice of cake. That's what grace is. Grace is not getting what we deserve, but getting what we don't deserve. Is there anybody glad that you were like Johnny, that we should have been dead, sleeping in our grave, but God That's what grace is. I want you to know today you're not here because you've been so good. You're not here because you've been so kind. You're not here because you haven't made mistakes in your life. But I thank God for his grace. You're not here based on the number of degrees that you have. You're not here based on the amount of money you have in your bank account. You're not here based off your stock portfolio. But you're here because of God's grace. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad because of his grace. I'm glad that I've done some things that I'm not proud of. But I can go to my heavenly father and tell him all about it. And I thank God for his lookout grace that he looked out for me when I could not look out for myself. I thank God for his look beyond grace. For he looked beyond my fault. And he supplied all of my needs according to his riches in glory. And that's why I'm so excited early on Sunday morning. Because I thank God for early Sunday morning grace. Is there anybody here just grateful that God's grace has covered you? Is there anybody here just glad to be in the number one more time? Is there anybody here know that it you breathe because of God's grace 
Is there anybody here know that the blood is in your body? It's because of God's grace. Is there anybody here? Just thank God for his grace. I got grace on one hand. I got mercy on the other hand. And I got to praise him early this morning. I wish I had some help in here. That somebody had a tough week. Somebody been challenged all week long. But y'all to throw your hand up in the air and say God's grace has kept me. I wish I had a witness here. I wish I had somebody over in this corner just glad that God's grace is covering you. I wish I had somebody right here that's glad that God's grace is covering you. I wish I had somebody back there that's glad that God's grace is covering you. If I can get about five of my deacons right here that'll throw your hand up in the air. I told you I get it up one way or the other and let you know that God's grace is covering is there anybody over here that got God's grace? Is there anybody on the choir stand that thankful for his grace? Is there anybody on the rostrum shout grace? God's amazing grace. Let us look at our text now. The resurrection in this chapter, Paul is coming to the third great spirituality. You will recall that the first he dealt with was cardinality. He dealt with those things which seem so important to the Corinthians and still seem so important to us today. Let me tell you, your stuff don't matter. Huh? Don't get caught up in your stuff. I don't care how good your car look, they can make a new one next year. Huh? I don't care how nice your house is. You've been a split level house with a split level personnel acting crazy. Don't, don't get caught up in your stuff. I've never seen a hearse hooked up. I've never seen a U-Haul hooked up to a hearse. You can't take it with you once you leave here. Don't get caught up in it now. Then Paul turned from the cardinality to the spirituality. How wonderful it is to know that every believer has a gift from the Holy Spirit. No one in here can say to the fact that you don't have a gift. We have been blessed with a gift from the Holy Spirit. Uh, I can't think of anything more thrilling than to know that God has given you and me a gift to function in his world that we're to be partnered with Jesus Christ and this tremendous enterprise. Now the gift that you have is not for you. Can I say that again? The spiritual gift that God has blessed you with is not for you. Your gift is to edify the body and to build up the body of Christ. It's never, it's never about you, but it's always about him. You don't sing a song and leave the church. I, I really showed, I, I, I told the church up there, you ain't telling nothing no. It's not The gift is not yours. The gift is God. If God used you to bless the house, then we ought to be thankful for God using you in such a manner. But sometimes in church we get it twisted because we confuse the gift with our talent. Huh? You can inherit talent, but the spiritual gift comes from God. That's why it blows your mind when somebody sings with power and conviction. And when they get on the church ground, they can cuss you out and be nasty to you. And you wonder why is it that they sing like that? Because they had talent. They were entertaining. It doesn't mean that they had the gift from God. So when you have the gift from God, you live what you're singing about. When you have the gift from God, your test become your testimony. When you have the gift from God, you treat folks right even when folks treat you wrong when you have the gift from God if they lie on you you love them anyhow when you have the gift that comes from God then Paul goes on to the great love chapter all gifts are to be exercised in love that's 13 and love is a fruit of the Holy Spirit it isn't something that we can wake up with it is given to us above everything else we need to see love this fruit of the spirit in the life of a believer. First John 4, 7, 8 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knows not God, for God is love. How can you say you can't stand nobody and say you love God? Hmm? 
I mean, if, 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 if we have the same daddy, so if you're born again and saved, we have the same heavenly father, correct? So you don't need to go around asking who's that baby's daddy. Not when you know who you are and whose you are. Amen, somebody. So how can I say I can't stand you and you are my brother and my sister, the same spirit, same DNA, blood runs through our DNA system and, you, we, and we are brothers and sisters have the same father, but you can't speak to me. You don't want me to sit on your rope. You don't tell me don't sit there, but you put something right near you to let you know that I don't want you to sit there. You said, Reverend Ezell, this is my purse. Put it on the floor. If somebody else can sit right next to you. But see, sometimes God will work it out so that the person you don't even want to sit on your row or show up on your row. And you think your row is blessed because you are there. It's blessed because they are there. Because God sent the right. Oh, y'all. Oh, excuse me in this house. But God is love. First John 4, 18 and 21 says, There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear, because fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God, whom he had not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God also love the brother. Oh, my brothers and sisters, it's very symbolic. If you think of the symbol of a cross, you remember a cross is vertical and the cross is horizontal. Everybody with me? At the top of the cross is God, the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. At the bottom of the cross is where we lie, where we stay. So what God does at the top of the cross, he reaches down with his hand of grace at the bottom we reach up with our hand of faith saying we believe now going horizontal across talks about our relationship with one another see if i have the right relationship with god then i have the right relationship with my brothers and my sister See, if a person say they don't like you, it's not your problem. It's not your fault. Tell them you have a God problem. You, you don't have the right relationship with God. If you have the right relationship with our Father, you can't help but to have the right relationship with me. We are messed up sometimes because of our relationship. But I'm hooked up to the holy. If dust touch divinity, if the creature hooks up with the creator, if I have the right relationship with God, then I can love everybody. I can serve with anybody. I can sing with anybody. I can pray with anybody. I can usher with anybody because of my relationship. Now we come to the third great spirituality, which is the fact of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and our own resurrection. The glory of the Christian faith that it never views life as ending with death. This life is not all there is. The Christian faith always look beyond the sunset to the sunrise. Always beyond the sunset to the sunrise. My brothers and sisters, you will see in our text on tonight, today, that Paul lists a bunch of witnesses at the time. And he said that was seen of Cephas, who was one of the 12, I'm in 15 and 5. He mentioned Cephas first. This is, of course, Simon Peter, to whom Jesus appeared privately. Uh, he mentioned him first. Jesus appeared to Peter after all, and Peter had denied him. Peter had to get, get things straightened out with the Lord. You see, the Lord is still in the foot washing business. <laughs> Then he was seen of the twelve. Who of the twelve? He appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. The twelve was used as a collective term for the body of disciples. It does not necessarily imply that there were twelve present. However, when you put them all together and Paul joined them, you have the twelve. We're talking about God's amazing grace. When you realize God's grace is amazing, it takes this. First of all, you got to look at the humility of Paul. Paul said in, in verse 15 and 9, he said, I am the least of the apostles. 
I'm the least. I'm not important. I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. See, Paul was a replacement for Judas Iscariot instead of Matthias. Uh, he had a position of great honor. Paul did not get puffed up with the position, but I only saw that he, because of his early persecuting of the church, was most unworthy to be called an apostle. Because God's grace is amazing, we ought to always remain humble because of his amazing grace. He was seen of James. This was probably a private interview. He was seen again by all the apostles. Now, last, he was seen by Paul. For Paul said, I'm the least of the apostles. That I'm not, to, I'm not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. For Philippians 3, 4 through 8, Paul was talking now. He said, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Paul started giving his credentials. I was circumcised on the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blaming. But what things were gained to me, those things I was counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things, but the loss of the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered much shame. He said, I count them all to have been just a waste. He remained humble. Be humble, my brothers and sisters, because of God's grace. First Peter 5, 6, and 7 said, Humble yourself, therefore up under the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, because he carried much for you. The Lord is selling us today because of his grace. Nobody here has any reason to get puffed up. I don't think more highly of yourself than you are. I'm going to tell you some people that I have problems with, and I'm glad that we don't have any in here at the Central Baptist Church. I have problems with arrogant folks who think they are better than anybody else. I have problems with folks who look down on folks. Just because you got a few nickels you can rub together don't make you better than anybody else. I have a problem with folks who talk down to folk. Just because you made it a little bit don't give you the right to talk down anybody. But I like folks who are willing to be humble and to give God the credit for everything that they have and give God the honor and the glory. I like folks who will let their light so shine before men so that our Father which art in heaven will get all the glory. Some folks are so high and they're, they're so holy and so heavenly bound that they aren't in the earthly good. But I've learned that everything I have is by the grace of God. Do I have a witness in hell? I don't have the right to look down on anybody. But the Lord has saved me and he's changed my life. I wish I had a few witnesses in here. Because thank God that you're not how you used to be. But you can praise God for where you are right now. Is there anybody here that got a right now praise? Is there anybody here that can praise God right now? Somebody shout right now. I need somebody to praise him right now. I don't know about you, but we all have some struggles. But how many of you know you cried your last year? And you cried it on yesterday that the struggle is over. I wish I had somebody here. Somebody here don't know your story. They don't know all the things that you've been through. But how many of you here, when you look back, you can praise God for right now? How many of you know you shouldn't be here today, but you can praise him for right now? Is there anybody here the doctor said wasn't going to make it, but you can praise him for right now? Anybody ever been in trouble, but you can praise him for right now? I need a few right now, praise him. Tap your neighbor on the shoulder and tell him right now. Tell him right now the Lord is blessing me. Right now the Lord is healing me. Tap him on the other shoulder. Tell him right now he's making a way for me. Right now he's opening a door for me. Right now there's a job waiting on me. Shout right now. Right now he'll make my enemy behave. Right now he'll wipe tears away from my eyes. Shout right now. I can't hear you. Take both of your hands and give him a double tap. So he'll give you double. I said double. Uh, double.
Y'all got to excuse me. It's been two weeks since I preached. He'll give you double for your trouble. First of all, my brothers and my sisters, our text reminds us to be humble. Let me tell you, you can be up today and down the same day. Hmm? You can lose what you have in a flash. Early 1980s, I was making over hundred and something thousand dollars a year. Two years later, IRS was going to share my taxes. Don't y'all be playing with me. You just got to keep it real. It wasn't their fault I wouldn't pay in taxes. <laughs> That's on me. You see what I'm saying? Boy, when the Lord bring you through. We got to have some common sense and learn a few things. I told you, I was self-employed and Cooker was working for the district and they going to shit her check. Because I didn't pay taxes. But I've told her, remember the vow, for better or for worse, for richer or for poor. Let me move on. Woo. Secondly, look at the hurt from Paul. Paul was humble. Look at the hurt. Paul had caused some hurt. He had caused some pain. Can I tell you this? We all have been hurt by somebody. And we all have hurt somebody. We all have been hurt by somebody. And we all have hurt somebody. Listen to what Paul said. Because I persecuted the church of God. Before his conversion, Paul was a vicious persecutor of the church. That was Paul before grace. Huh? Think about how you were. Think about how I was before we were saved. Is that scary? Does that not frighten you? Huh? Think about we're on serve communion there, everybody gonna sing drinking and wine. That was the time you used to sing drinking and wine and it wasn't in church. Huh? He was cruel and bloody and he had a zeal for persecuting the church. Uh, Paul felt his evil in his unconverted life made him unworthy of divine honors later. Don't miss that. Paul felt with all this stuff I've done, before I became saved, there's no way that God is going to bless me later. I don't care what you have done. Before you became saved, if you're willing to repent and turn it over to the Lord, the Lord has overflow blessing that's waiting on you. The holier a person, the more unworthy they will see themselves. Verse 9, the, na the name Paul comes from the wor word Paulus in Latin, which means least. I persecuted the church, though so God has forgiven him Paul can hardly forgive himself at the remembrance of his past sin. That's why I want to hear. Huh? The reason some of us can't move past the hurt and the pain because we cannot forgive ourselves. Huh? You have to be, if God has forgiven you, you must be willing to forgive yourself. I say in marriage counseling that forgiveness does not automatically bring back trust. You can forgive a person. It doesn't mean you trust them the same way. Trust has to be earned over a period of time. But when God has forgiven you, quit walking around with your head down. Quit letting folks talk down to you. If God has forgiven you, then your sins have been forgiven. Shall not rise anymore. Acts 8, 1 and 3 remind us his name then was Saul. Saul was consented unto his death. At that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. They were all scattered abroad through the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church. He went in every house pulling men and pulling women out by the hat. Paul did some evil things, but God was able to forgive him. I don't know about you, but that's good news for me. If he can forgive Paul, he surely can forgive me. 
and he surely can forgive you. Yes, my brothers and sisters, when you think about God's amazing grace, even though we have hurt someone and caused pain and caused affliction, because of God's amazing grace, he's still able to forgive us. Let's I hold you long this morning. I want to press to the close right now. First of all, I want to remind you about God's amazing grace. Oh, that's good news to know. Ah, uh, his grace is so amazing. Ah, uh, when I think of how good the Lord has been, my soul just cries hallelujah. I thank the Lord for saving me. How many of you know that we serve a good God? How, I said, how many of you know that we serve a, a good God? A great God is worthy of a great praise. I don't think that he would be satisfied with the praise we just gave him. How, how many of you know that we serve a, a good God? I feel somebody about to praise their way through some stuff right now. How many of you made up your mind that you're going to learn to be humble? No matter what else is going on, you stay humble and watch God are bless you in the midst. In spite of your help, your hurt. Then third and final, I want to remind you that Paul knew the source of his help. Is that all right? That he knew the source of his help. My brothers and my sisters, he declared that I'm the least of the apostles. Ah, but Paul knew that by the grace of God, I am what I am. And the grace which was bestowed upon me was not grace that was in vain. For Ephesians 2 and 8 said, for by grace, are you saved through faith? That not of yourself it is the gift of God. Not of works lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus on the good work. Which God had ordained that we should walk in them. Somebody asked the question, Pastor, how do we get that grace? Ephesians 4 and 7 says, but every one of you is given grace. According to the measure of the gift of Christ. Well, it's not something you can buy. It's not something you can earn. But it's given to us by our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. James 4 and 6, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he said, God resisted the proud, but he gave grace unto the humble. Second Corinthians 12, 9 and 10 said that, remind us that his grace is sufficient, that his strength is made perfect in the midst of our weakness. In other words, Paul was saying, the weaker we are, the stronger that Christ becomes in us. I don't know about you, but proud of taking my seat right now. I just want to talk a little while about his grace. Well, his grace can lift one from the gutters under glory. His grace can take us from prison unto paradise, from hell unto heaven, and from despair unto this life. His grace is what makes heavy burdens bearable, high mountains climbable, deep valley crossable, and lonely nights livable. His grace has brought men into the valley of loneliness, the veil of tears, the wind of persecution, the storm of opposition, and the nights of despair. I don't know how you feel, but I'm so grateful this morning for God's amazing grace. I don't know how you feel, but I'm glad that God's grace still covers me. And I believe we have some witnesses in here that's so glad this morning because of God's grace. Well, I'm getting ready to close now, but I want to talk about by the grace of God to have a witness in here. Well, I'm reminded, my brothers and my sister, about a man who was going to a silk and stocking church. Uh, the silk and stocking church, uh, they didn't believe in making a bunch of noise. Uh, they were real sophisticated. Uh, they, they believed in having a quiet praise going on. I have problems with the church that's quiet because when I leave here and transition to the other side, there'll be singing over there. There'll be joy over there. There'll be praising over there. So if you don't like noise down here, you may not want to come to heaven up there because what a time, what a time. 
Ha, 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 ha. What a time when all of God's children get together to have a witness in here. But I thank God for his grace. Well, it said his gentleman went to church, and when the pastor started preaching, he began to say amen. When the choir started singing, he got up and clapped his hand. Then he started to do his dance. He remembered what the Lord had done for him, and he made a promise to God that for God I'll live, and for God I'll die. That somebody, anybody, everybody ought to test Testify to have anybody here. Is that your testimony that wherever you go, that you will let somebody know what the Lord has already done for you? To have a witness in here. If you go ahead and praise him, I'll go ahead and bring it in right about now. Well, it said later on during the week, they sent a committee to go by the man's house and let him know the way he acted was not appropriate in church. They said, we don't do that in this church. We don't get loud in this church. We're reserved in this church. We don't praise God like that. If you can't be on better behavior, you may not want to come back to our church. So the man looked around and began to thank the committee he said you let the church know that I may not be back at the church if that's the way they want to have church but here's what I want you to do I want you to look around on my phone that everything I have by the grace of God that God gave it to me this little house that I have that's paid for that God gave it to me ah do I have a witness in hell all this land that you see that I own that God gave it to me by the grace of God that I am what I am if you look over there you see my wife we've been married 50 years God gave her to me if you look over there and see my children all my children God gave them to me so if your church don't want me to praise him by the grace of God all I want you to do I'm gonna stop plowing for one minute I'm gonna stop plowing for one minute all I want you to do is just hold my meat right where I am if you hold my mule I'll begin to praise God for everything that I have is there anybody here shout hold my mule cause I'm getting ready to praise him for what the Lord has done for me I'm getting ready to praise God I could have been there lost my mind but by the grace of God I'm still here he woke me up this morning I'm still here he made a way for me I'm still here is there anybody here that'll stand right where you are is it by the grace of God I gotta praise him by the grace of God I will I will I will I will I will I will bless the Lord at all times turn to your neighbor say by his grace the Lord is worthy shout amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I say is there anybody here can praise God for his grace his grace is going to bring you out his grace is going to deliver you his grace is going to cover you throw up your hand in the air say God's grace Say yes, say yes, oh, say yes, oh, say yes, say yes, say yes, say yes, say yes, say yes. God's amazing grace. Remember what grace is. Grace is not getting what we deserve. If we all got what we deserve, none of us would be here. That's why I can't deal with holy attitudes. All of us got some stuff. Raggedy the past, raggedy now. But God amazing grace 
he gives us what we don't deserve. When I praise him for it, when I looked at him, this text is reminded, because of his grace, be humble. I want you to do that central, remain humble. Don't never get arrogant about yourself. Don't never talk down to people. I don't care if you're the supervisor. I never dress a senior at this church without yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, that's the way I was raised. My mama would get up and slap me. That's just a foundation. Learn to be humble. And then realize that, look at the hurt that we cause others. Look at the hurt that we have been caused. But God, in spite of all Paul ways, God forgave him. Can I tell you something today? You are forgiven. Let that rest with your spirit. Hear me. You are forgiven. Somebody need to receive that today. You've been in bondage for too long. You are forgiven. Stop folks, letting folks make your past be your present. You are forgiven. Husbands and wives learn to forgive each other. Family members learn to forgive each other. Quit being mad over somebody dying and somebody got something you didn't get. Go out and earn your own. So you don't have to worry about that stuff. I want to know you are forgiven. Somebody's hurting today. I want you to know you are forgiven. God told me to drop it in your spirit that you are forgiven. Someone in here may have been a victim of molestation in the past. God told me to tell you, forgive yourself so you can move on to have the life that God would have you. Somebody here has been a victim of domestic abuse. I want you to know you are forgiven. You don't have to be nobody punching back to prove that they love you. If you let somebody hit you and say they love you, then you get as crazy as they are. You are forgiven. You don't have to take that. You don't have to accept that you're a queen. You, nobody should be beating on you. You're a queen. Uh, and, and, and we ought to treat our queens like they deserve to be treated. Any man that beats a woman is less than a man. We ought to treat them with love and treat them with respect. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I stopped by to tell somebody, I feel your hurt. I feel your pain. I know what you're going through. But you are forgiven. I didn't know where your help comes from. By the grace of God, I am what I am. May not be much in your eyesight, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Made some mistakes along the way, but by the grace of God, I am. Just play it a little bit for us, Reverend. was lost but now oh, I was blind but now oh I see yes yes let us all stand 
as our choir leads us in our invitation to him amazing grace everybody's congregation and you know it will I be one today that'll step out from where you are come and partake of God's amazing grace will you come yes 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 Yes, God. But now, oh, I was blind. Yeah. Go ahead and say it. Through many dangers. Tars and snare. I have already come. Will you come? Door of the church is still open. Somebody just started shouting all over the place. Praise God. Go ahead and say it. Go ahead and say it. Say it, church. Open your mouth. Go ahead and say it. All over this building. Just say it. Oh, go ahead and say it. Praise God. Oh, praise God. Say it like you mean it. Praise God. Love. One more time, Reverend. Let's take it up. Give both your hands up. Take it up. person hand next to you. Grab the person hand next to us. You will go to God in prayer. God our Father, we thank you right now for your amazing grace. We thank you right now 
that you look beyond our fault.